Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy, as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. The stock market has been very volatile, especially as investors continue to fret about inflation data. But don't let that deter you from investing, because over the long term, investing can consistently tends to be the best investment strategy. This is why I actually use volatility and downturns as my favorite time to invest into my best stocks. But I always make sure to do my own research before I invest into any particular company and I suggest that you should do the same. One group in particular that investors have been talking about is Truth Social, or better yet, Trump Media and Technology Group. This company's ticker symbol is DJT and we actually predicted that this company would dramatically pull back in their share price and that is exactly what has happened. The company share price plunged yesterday after the company revealed that they lost $58 million last year and they only generated around $4.1 million worth of revenue. On top of that, this social media company also gave user metrics where they revealed that they have 10 times fewer users than threads. And it seems that this company still has further to fall in their share price, so please be careful if you are invested into that company. Next up, let's talk about Google, or more specifically their parent company Alphabet, because Google Google recently went through a privacy lawsuit. So let's talk about what this lawsuit was about. Google has agreed to wipe the data of millions of users' browsing histories as a part of a settlement regarding a lawsuit that started back in 2020. The reason why this lawsuit was filed originally is because Google's incognito mode for Chrome really wasn't that incognito, and they would actually still record people's browsing histories. Once this information became known, a lawsuit was filed, and now it is finally coming to an end almost four years later. But since this lawsuit is ending, this is actually going to act as a positive catalyst for Alphabet shares, which I personally hold in my portfolio, but always make sure to do your own research. Next up, let's talk about United Airlines, because United is asking their pilots to take unpaid leave. The reason that they are doing this is because they don't have a lot of Boeing planes right now to book flights, so they are citing delays of Boeing's planes as the main problem here. This naturally will cause a decrease in United's revenue and their bottom line. So if you see a divot in the most recent earnings report for this company, now you know why, and it could be a great opportunity to buy into this company on a weakness, because fundamentally, United Airlines is very strong. If you've been following with these news updates, I've actually been advocating to buy Boeing stock, even though their share price has been crashing, due Due to all of the negative publicity that has surrounded this company over the last few months. But despite this, recently an analyst actually believes that this company will surge in their share price up to $300 over the next 12 months, which would be a hefty payday for investors. So let's talk about it. If you didn't know, Boeing is an airplane or air vehicle manufacturer, and their ticker symbol is BA. This company's share price has been crashing because of all of the negative news that has surrounded this company over the last few months. But while that was happening, I actually cited the fundamental strengths of Boeing, because once all of this short-term news blows over, this company is still going to soar sky-high in their share price, in my opinion. And this analyst seems to think so as well. One analyst tracking this aerospace giant predicts that they will regain significant output altitude over the next year. This Jeffries analyst reiterated her buy recommendation on the stock and she gave it a price target of $300 which they could obtain over the next 12 months, which would mean that this company could literally surge in their share price by almost 60%. But don't act too hastily by buying this company prematurely, because there could still be further downside in this company's share price. It seems that we are not yet done with the negative news updates surrounding Boeing, and until we are, then that would be a good time to buy into this company. But in the meantime, it looks like we are not done with their negative PR as of right now. However, if you are a long-term investor like myself and you don't mind holding this company for the next 5-10 to 10 years, then looking further into this company and doing your own due diligence will be recommended. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Boeing and this analyst's price target of $300 per share, which is pretty impressive. You should also be aware that Microsoft, which is a huge technology company, ticker symbol MSFT, has officially lost a lawsuit. Over the long term, I don't think this will negatively impact Microsoft at all, considering that they are an absolute behemoth in regards to technology and various office suites. 
If you didn't know, I am a huge Microsoft fan, and I have a large holding in this particular company regarding my investments. So I would highly recommend that you do your own research on this company so you can determine whether or not it's good for your personal portfolio. Next up, let's talk about another technology company named Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR. If you didn't know, Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government clients. The reason why Palantir is back in the news is because they recently disclosed a 6.5% stake in MSP Recovery, ticker symbol LIFW. If you don't know what this company does, they are a healthcare recoveries and data analytics company, which is based in the United States as well as in Puerto Rico. If you didn't know, this is a super micro cap company, which trades for approximately $92.6 million. But recently, their share price jumped by 47% up to 98 cents per share because of this news. For me personally, I am not going to be investing into this company because Palantir has a lot of deals with various small cap companies to eventually have them use their technology as a part of their overall deal. Therefore, Palantir could be buying into this company with their 6.5% stake to earn business from this company and not necessarily because it's a good investment. And that's why I personally am not investing into ticker symbol LIFW. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about Palantir and ticker symbol LIFW. Next up, let's talk about another artificial intelligence company named Intel. If you didn't know, Intel recently revealed new details about its manufacturing operations, and their losses seem to have widened. Intel has multiple divisions underneath their umbrella, and we're going to focus here on Intel Foundry. This is a relatively new division within the company, and this particular division is responsible for manufacturing. The problem here is that the company dropped in their sales from $27.5 billion to $18.9 billion in 2023, which is a pretty substantial drop. On top of that, their operating loss also widened from $5.2 billion up to $7 billion, which is not good news for this company. The good news is that this particular division is seeking to make chips for other companies. So they want to separate themselves from the other competition on the stock market right now, and this should positively impact Intel. The company expects this year to be the peak of their losses, which means after this year, the company is actually going to grow and decrease their losses by narrowing these margins. This means that between now and 2030, we can actually see this company breaking even in regards to this particular division. To quote straight from the article, the CEO repeated his assertion that Intel will restore its technology advantage by next year. Over time, that will improve the capabilities of Intel's products and make them cheaper to manufacture, end quote. Therefore, this is good news, but it means that investors shouldn't buy into this company right now. Instead, I would wait until 2024 ends, and in the meantime, I would put this company on a watch list. Then after this year concludes, then that would be a better buying opportunity in my opinion. However, I do personally hold a little bit of Intel shares in my personal portfolio because I believe that this is a pretty good company to hold over the long term. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about another gigantic technology company, which also makes up a large portion of my personal portfolio, and that is none other than Apple. Apple is known for selling their iPhones as well as personal computers, but recently, an Evercore ISI analyst believes that there is a further upside left in this stock. The analyst says, Apple's latest research paper suggests the tech giant will be an AI winner when it solves the issue of having on-device inference that can enable an iPhone supercycle. The analyst goes on to say, The key innovation here appears to be around reference resolution, which refers to how AI can understand references to on-screen data as well as more conversational text. The analyst goes on to elaborate, Apple simplifies the normally complex task of reference resolution by converting all on-screen data to text, which is far easier for a large language model to parse relative to images. This is the key feature that enables Apple to deliver high performance with a more limited number of parameters. The analyst goes on to explain further, We believe AAPL's AI strategy will focus on incorporating on-device inference for large language models that will substantially uplift the user experience for not only the iPhone, but also the Mac slash iPad. Given their vertical integration and especially their control over their own silicon, AAPL is best positioned to not only expand the moat surrounding the iOS ecosystem, but also potentially drive an accelerated refresh cycle should the final implementation be deemed a big 
big enough change. Lastly, he adds, the refresh cycle will likely be driven by significant updates to the hardware, including a potentially improved neural engine or GPU. Additionally, a significant enough upgrade in capabilities could potentially drive an uplift in average selling prices, end quote. Wow, that was a lot. So what does all of this mean? Well, I'll tell you simply. As Apple integrates artificial intelligence, such as large language models, into their various devices, including the iPhone, the Mac, or iPad, this is going to drive sales because it benefits consumers. Overall, this is a phenomenal news update for Apple, and I personally hold AAPL shares in my portfolio, so I'd love to hear if you personally hold this company in yours in the comments down below. Next up, let's talk about some electric vehicle companies, starting off with none other than BYD, ticker symbol BYDDY. If you didn't know, BYD is a battery manufacturer that really put themselves on the map back in 1995. BYD is China's leading electric vehicle seller, and they even have stolen the crown away from Tesla in regards to deliveries. As of right now, BYD is the world's largest EV seller and Tesla is number two. This is because during the first quarter, BYD sold 626,263 new energy vehicles, which represents a 13% year-over-year increase. On top of that, BYD's overseas sales literally tripled to around 38,434 units. By contrast, analysts forecast that Tesla delivered around 457,000 vehicles, which is a far cry from BYD's 626,000 vehicles sold. To make matters worse for Tesla, analysts fear that Tesla is actually on track to have a year-over-year -year decline in regards to their total year deliveries. Now, this should not be a shock to you, considering that Elon Musk himself warned investors that this year is going to be notably slower. So hopefully, if you are a Tesla investor, please brace yourself. For me personally, I do hold Tesla and BYD in my personal portfolio because I believe they are both fundamentally solid companies. But now let's talk about some more risky EV stocks, which would include NIO, Li Auto, as well as Xpeng, which are Chinese EV manufacturers. For the first three quarters ended in March, NIO delivered around 30,053 vehicles. Meanwhile, Li Auto set a new milestone because they posted a 52.9% jump in their deliveries because they delivered 80,400 units during the first three months. Lastly, we have Xpeng, which just met their delivery guidance. Their deliveries rose by 20% to 21,821 vehicles, and this was right in between the range of 21,000 and 22,500 vehicles, which they predicted that they would end up delivering. However, it seems that the real competition is between Li Auto and Neo, and it seems that Xpeng has taken a back seat. But the giants are currently duking it out right now, with BYD and Tesla at each other's throats. So I would love to hear your thoughts about any or all of these EV companies down below in the comments. Lastly, let's talk about some AI stocks which are plummeting right now for no good reason which would include artificial intelligence stocks such as Advanced Micro Devices, ticker symbol AMD, C3.AI, ticker symbol AI, ARM Holdings, ticker name ARM, ticker symbol ARM, and last but not least, Micron Technology, ticker symbol MU. These companies have dropped by 3.7%, 2.8%, and 1.8%, and another 1.8% respectively. So let's first talk about what they do, and then my thoughts on these companies. For some background information, AMD provides graphics processing units, also known as GPUs, that facilitate the training and use of artificial intelligence models. This company is directly comparable to NVIDIA. So AMD and NVIDIA have been going at it for quite a while right now, and I personally hold both of those companies in my portfolio. However, between both of these companies, NVIDIA would be the better company. Next, let's move over and talk about C3.AI, which provides ready-built software models for enterprises. This company is somewhat comparable to Palantir, but I personally think Palantir is a better AI company to buy than C3.AI. Next, let's talk about ARM Holdings, which creates the blueprints upon which many widely used semiconductors are based. Lastly, Micron Technology makes flash memory and storage processors that are critical components for AI processing. In my personal opinion, companies like Broadcom, Palantir, AMD, Arm Holdings, Snowflake, Micron Technology, NVIDIA, and a super microcomputer are probably some of the best AI stocks to buy right now. But there is a catch here because Arm Holdings is rather expensive considering that they trade at 27 times their forward sales. Meanwhile, AMD trades at 9 times their forward sales just like C3.AI, and a Micron trades at just 4 times their forward sales. Ideally, the lower this number is, the better buying opportunity that the company becomes. However, we can also use another 
accounting ratio and another metric to determine if these companies are good buying opportunities right now, and that would be their forward price to earnings ratio compared to their earnings to growth, also known as the PEG ratio. Ideally, we would want a PEG ratio of one or less than one, and Arm Holdings, Micron, and AMD all clock in at less than one, which is ideal. Meanwhile, C3.AI is by far the most risky, coming in at a four. Therefore, I do not like C3AI, and I think Palantir and Snowflake are much better buying opportunities right now. And that will conclude the quick AI stock news update in this portfolio. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about any or all of these companies. Remember to go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next YT video.